You could drive by a restaurant 10 times and not even really know that it's there. We're not near anything. You have to make an effort to come to our place. So it's us here from all these different backgrounds coming and doing phenomenal work. It blows people's minds away. Pandan rice, you add to that very creamy, very strong curry chicken. It's all about the curry. This is the Durga. It's a functioning sheep farm. I don't even think a lot of people in New York know that New York is like this. People can happen into the restaurant and they'll say, where am I? How did I end up here? I kind of like the romantic notion that people stumble across it. And it is a word of mouth place, you know. My name is Hassan Siddiqui. I am the general manager and part owner of the Tulip and the Rose. My name is Erdem Kahyolu. I am the former general manager and a part owner at the Tulip and Rose Cafe. We're about three hours north of New York City, Delaware County, upstate New York, in the Catskill Mountains. We feature cuisine from all over the world, Indonesian, Malaysian, Thai, Mediterranean, North African, classic American. We try to branch out and kind of check all the boxes. Special for vegetarians, called Low Day Vegetarian Malay Curry. Very subtle, very light, but it's very rich and it's very satisfying, even though it's vegetarian. This is the dish that you want to eat. We started cooking at the farmer's market nearby. The locals insisted we open up a restaurant. We opened in July 2014. One thing that people love for breakfast is we make this Javanese noodle bowl. There's people in the Catskill Mountains who are eating noodles for breakfast, so I think that's, that's kind of a miracle right there. Yeah. What we're most known for is our Adana Kebab yeah. sandwich. That's what started this whole thing. Also known as the gyro, even if it's not a gyro. It's Everybody not, calls it a gyro. It's not a gyro, but <laughs> people call it a gyro. This is the Osman Ladarga. It is a Sufi center following the Osman Naqshbandi Tariqa, the Sufi way. We have Malay, we have Indian, we have Turkey, we have Egypt, Syria, Russia, Cuba. Cuba, America, Peru, Peru, China. So it's, it's pretty diverse. In old times, it was somewhere that people could stop and have a bowl of soup and have a meal and have a place to stay. And we carry that tradition. Every person has to have food, you know, but when you transcend that need to say, I want to show you where I'm from, I want to explore your culture, by learning what you cook. That's when there's a different taste that comes. That's when there's a different beauty that comes. And because they appreciate our food, they start to appreciate the people who make the food. And the people who make the food are coming from all different backgrounds. So it helps to break some barriers or some stereotypes too, because maybe something that they hear in the news about a certain type of people as like a boogeyman, how is it possible that they make such such so good food. Ben dört senedir bu kafede çalışıyorum. Ee, bundan önce Türkiye'deydim ve kasaplık yapıyordum. Bu yemek Osmanlı İmparatorluğundan geliyor. Çok eski bir yemek. Çok e, Osmanlı zamanında hünkârları çıkan bir yemek çünkü bu. Biz bu restoranda Türk yemekleri yaptığımız zaman da gelen müşterilerimiz, yani müşteri demeyeyim, hepsi bizim ailemiz gibi. Bu yemeğimiz Hünkar beğendi. Etim ve patlıcanın uyumu çok güzel olduğunu düşünüyorum ve size de tavsiye ediyorum. This is the Durga. It's a functioning sheep farm. We're about 10 minutes from the restaurant in Sydney Center. We moved up here around 2004, 2005. Back then our sheikh already had a small flock of sheep. It's a beautiful place. Our sheikh, he bought this property because it had a spiritual pull. Our flock is not for commercial purposes. It's, it's part of our tradition is to always have that connection with nature and always have that connection with the animals and to take care of them. Sufi Islam is traditional Islam. It's Islam the way that it was practiced by our great-grandfathers. It's Islam that focuses on 
yourself. When I go to sleep at night, I'm going to take an accounting of what I did today. What did I do that made people happy? And what did I do to break people's hearts? You're going to have a love for your creator if you make something delicious. When the chefs cook in our kitchen, when the food is prepared, even when the ingredients are bought, they're bought with the intention to say, I'm going to cook food that's going to give people energy to worship. I'm going to cook food that's going to make people happy. I'm going to cook food that makes people thank their creator. So Erdem, his background is Turkish. My background is Pakistani Indian. The way we practice our religion, we can't practice in our home countries. To have this amount of freedom, to have this diversity, it's not going to happen anywhere else. You know, like this is really like lightning in a bottle. When people think upstate New York, they don't think Sufi Muslim group. Some people were complaining that there were men with turbans on a hill. People thought like this was a terrorist compound. The FBI raided us over here. Homeland Security, FBI, local police force. They shut the roads down and then they took everybody's ID. We let them look anywhere they want and we don't have anything except for some sheep and chicken. And There's some knives in the kitchen. Yes, we do have <laughs> knives, but to cut meat and, and vegetables with. So we have a small cemetery of just a couple people buried there from our community and the local town board of, of Sydney without contacting us or reaching out to us had voted to try to disinter the bodies. The town supervisor at that time had said that if we disinter the bodies from the cemetery, maybe this will make the Muslims leave this area. It picked up some steam in the media and a lot of people came to support us and it, it helped us to become known in the area. People who you look at them first glance and you would think that they would hate to have us here, they came out and said, we do not agree with this. A lot of that um, spurred us to open the restaurant to kind of give us a little bit more of a presence in the area. Locally, at least in this county, people don't look at us as like the boogeyman anymore. They realize that we're, we're human too, Americans too. We just come from different backgrounds, maybe have a different spiritual tradition. We don't hold grudges. It's not something that we live in. We don't live in that time in 2010 when everybody was against us. You know, like we live in the good that came from that, the ease that came after that hardship. When you break bread with somebody and you get to know them, the barriers start coming down, the hate starts to go away. To be a diamond in the rough, that's just kind of a bonus. There's a different pull to this area. There's something else going on. And I think when there you get people together who acknowledge that, they kind of abandon that this is weird and just give into it and say, okay, there would be this crazy restaurant somewhere around here because this place is crazy, a good crazy. <laughs>